What is good? We're back. And we're ready to roll. <laughs> Where's it at? Ready to roll. Voice isn't all the way back, but I couldn't couldn't get the, the deep undertones. Uh, but today we have some must draft buy low bounce back candidates. Let's go. Fired up about that. That's gonna be a lot of fun to talk about. We got our guy Austin. Uh, Austin Abbott with two B's, two T's, and two F's. How's it going, man? What's going on, Casey? How are you, man? It's uh, I, I just want to say, man, pumped to be here. And the first thing that we're going to talk about today, bounce back players. Some guys that burned you last year, but I believe we're going to talk about a few guys today that are going to really redeem themselves. You know, uh, do you got that bit with, uh, you know, Dumb and Dumber? <laughs> I don't think we have Harry. that on here anymore. <laughs> I don't but, think I do. Totally uh, redeem yourself. Am yeah. I right? Yeah. Am I so, right? Am I yeah. right? So that's the best we got. <laughs> so, uh, you know, right off the rip, it's it's uh, it's Kyle Pitts. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Kyle Pitts, ain't <laughs> yeah. not bad, not yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. I got it right off the rip out of there. Not and bad. I said, oh, right off oh. two. <laughs> Throw some Kyle Pitts in there, but Austin, who's who's the first guy that is is going to be the must draft buy low bounce back candidate of the year? Stone pipe, stone cold lead pipe, lock of the century of the week. Who you got? Yep. So the first player I'm going to talk about, somebody who used to be the RB1 in Dynasty. Mm. A lot of people have kind of, I don't want to say forgotten about him, but they don't care about him quite as much. His ADP's definitely dropped. We're talking about Jonathan Taylor, Casey. Yeah. This Love is it. a player who, ah, man, he still checks every box for me. Yes, he did burn GMs over the past, what, two years now oh, right yeah, he's he's been rather disappointing uh he's still just 25 years old man uh you know let me ask you this question what if jonathan taylor ends up being the rb1 in 2024 would that blow you away right i i think there's definitely a possibility that it could happen again yeah. i'm not saying it's going to but he's one of the few running backs that could legitimately do it and, and do it again right he's already done it uh he he had an incredible 2021 campaign uh, first in rushing yards, dude had over 1,800 rushing yards. Like that is, that's a crazy number in itself, man. Uh, over 2,000 total yards. First, uh, he, he had, had almost 2,200 total yards. Uh, and he was second in touches, 372. First in touchdowns with 20, man. So again, we're talking about a player who had 20 touchdowns over 2,000 yards. Like that type of upside is 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 glaring from Jonathan Taylor. We've seen it. Yeah! We know we know that he can absolutely replicate it again. And again, man, like like he's just 25 years old, 5'10, 226. Uh, and he signed a three year deal, $42 million, 12, 12 a year. I love it, man. Like it not only if you're a Colts fan or, or just a fan of uh, just just the situation now, even more. I feel like Jonathan Taylor, it's wheels up almost almost more than ever, I would argue, right? Because you got to remember, man, like like he and this is back in 2021. He outscored every running back in football by over 70 points besides Austin Eckler. Right. Yeah. It was that true league winning upside that he had that year and and still has, in my opinion. Uh, he was RB six as a rookie, uh, you know, and that was while, you know, Frank Wright had him on the tight leash. You know, remember Marlon Mack, like that that whole dilemma, mm -hmm. uh, Zach Moss. And, and look, man, let, let, let's get up to more. Let's get up to speed, right? Zach Moss, he's now in Cincinnati. Mm. Zach Moss wasn't a Jag last year. Like, he was not just a guy. Zach Moss was really productive. He was actually really good. Uh, and the last thing I'll say about Jonathan Taylor, four consecutive years of 4.3 yards per carry or higher. Very efficient. Just just a great running back. And I think that he's absolutely worth the stab at his ADP. Yeah, I mean, we, we didn't even really get to see – very much anthony richardson and and jt you know we, we didn't get to see that really at all adp is um, at 310 for those on the AD, podcast adp at 310 uh so that's been climbing i feel like it was i felt like it was down even a little bit further but that thing's been climbing back up there like you said austin i think one of the more important things when you're talking about buy low must buy all this stuff like it's not gonna sh doesn't surprise you at all and jonathan taylor is one of like the highest end cases of it that for him to be RB one overall wouldn't wouldn't shock or surprise anybody. For the, even if it was the next three years, it wouldn't shock me. Um, he's that good. He's got the the same type of 
Barkley, you know, not maybe not quite no, not, not very many CMCs, but he's got the kind of juice that can put you up into that upper echelon of of quarterback scoring uh, points week in week out, and and with Anthony Richardson taking over the the Colts offensive line. Uh, obviously, they've they've now put Ad Mitchell out there, and there's a respectable receiving core all, all one through three. We we think, which we haven't seen in a while, but Anthony Richardson putting the screws down on on being able to run around. Now, now you could say maybe some TD upside potentially goes away from Jonathan Taylor, but I think he's going to be just fine. He can catch passes. I I love this. This is this is a great call by you, Austin. All right. Well, I'm going to move on to the next guy, and it, it it's not Kyle Pitts. I know that's what everybody wants it to be because we've been a Kyle Pitts show forever. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Kyle Pitts lie because it was the low hanging fruit, so I didn't take it. I wanted to dig a little deeper, um, and I'm not getting off this by the Steelers bandwagon. We're tripling down once again. Uh, Pat Fryermuth is my bounce back candidate here. He's currently at our FFD ADP of 1101. Uh, and this is a guy from in 21, his rookie season. He had 77 targets, 60 receptions, 612 yards, seven touchdowns, 11 missed tackles forced. And then in 22, had 96 targets. That was six overall, 63 targets. That was six overall. Receptions. Uh, reception, sorry. 73 yards. That was six overall. And then the TDs. 732 yards. Yeah, right. Uh, that was sixth overall. <laughs> Sorry, really, really blowing that. And then only two touchdowns that had a little touchdown regression. Um, yeah. Yards per route run, 1.68. That was good for seventh overall. Third and missed tackles force with 11. Fryermuth has the juice, baby. He can do it. Uh, what what you look at here is there's, there's the concussions. There's uh, 21, there's a concussion. 22, there's a concussion. 22, 23, you had a knee sprain late in january 23 you had a chest injury 23 you had a hamstring that landed him on ir so missed some periods of time uh, but now you're 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 rolling back in uh and and in the 23 season he came back week 11 and you know was was pretty decent 44 targets 32 receptions 308 yards and and, and two tds you know atlanta was 34 uh percent of total pass attempts went to tight ends and this is why we're even more interested in Pat Fryermuth, whereas Pittsburgh was at 19.2% of total pass attempts going to tight ends, right? And and really what this comes down to is your your starting wide receivers are listed as George Pickens. Bye, I love George Pickens. Mm -hmm. But then Van Jefferson, Scotty Miller, Quez Watkins, and Roman Wilson, who's a rookie. You know, I, I don't mind Roman Wilson. I think Roman Wilson's fine, but I don't want Roman Wilson walking into my two spot, you know, especially right now as a rookie. I wouldn't mind if he was my third or fourth guy and was learning. I think Roman can play, but what I guess what I'm getting at is it just seems like Pat Fryermuth could, could have so much volume in this offense. They could move him around. He I've read some blurbs. He was super excited about being able to be moved around, run a bunch of different routes, do a bunch of different things, and pretty much own the middle of the field, which is what Arthur Smith wants to do. Now, you know, you could push back and say, well, Russell doesn't throw over the middle of the field. Well, buddy, Russ, you're going to have to throw. You got to meet us in the middle here, or you ain't going to be playing anymore, bro. Like, th this is where the place is on. This is where you got to go. Or, hey, guess what? Justin Fields will throw it to, over the middle of the field. See Cole Komet last year. You know what I mean? So, I just I think there's a really good path to Pat Fryermuth just bouncing back, just superseding this 11-1 ADP. He's just so cheap right now. There's so many of this, so much of this Steelers offense that nobody wants a part of, and Pat Fryermuth's a big part of it. And we're always talking tight end premium 1.5 at a bare minimum here. And I and this is what that ADP is. That's not even regular. That, that's that's with the premium in it. That ADP right there. So <clears throat> I, I just see him as a screaming bounce back. We've seen it before. We know the juice is there. He's a very athletic guy, and this system tends to lean towards production from the tight ends. And it's not like they have a list of tight ends behind them. I know they drafted uh, homeboy uh, Darnell. Darnell. Darnell Washington, yeah, from Georgia. But, you know, Pat's going to be their guy to get in there and get it done. So big, 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 big uh, high in on the, the buying opportunity of Pat Fryermuth. I, I think this is a guy that, that you could easily see finishing in top five in, in tight end scoring here this year. Casey, I really, really need a tight end in my main dynasty league. And I think you kind of just sold me, man. I, uh, I'm looking to buy somebody relatively cheaper. And you said he's going, what, 11th round? 11th in, in, in premium. Yeah, so uh, I, I may have to hit that GM up, GM up right after this pod, man. That's uh, that, uh, 
<laughs> you, you're Moves convinced. To make now. Now. Yeah, it's you must it. buy. You said it. Look <laughs> at that. <laughs> no, no, but seriously, man, like like those are some really good points. I think I think that, you know, it's really the injuries that have ultimately deterred, yeah. you know, right? I mean, rightfully so, right? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push back on that, but uh, no, I, I thought you brought up a lot of valid points. He's already 25. That's young yeah. for a time. I end. know I'm being sarcastic. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, you know, that's super young and that's great. So, all right, Austin, who you got next for us? Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 rookie draft kit complete with rookie rankings, ADP and player pages. All for your pleasure. The next player I want to talk about, another bounce back, Casey, T. Higgins. Woo! Go Tigers. T. Clemson. Jason, can you say Clemson real quick? Clemson. (laughs) Clemson. Uh, we're man, we're talking about a wide receiver who's in such a unique situation wow. right now. Um, that being with the Cincinnati Bengals, right? Him and Jamar Chase, as of I think two days ago, didn't show up for OTAs, right? Both of them are looking for a new contract, so we're in unique times. Sixty-eight point seven percent success rate versus versus man coverage last year. That's what T. That that's the number that T. Higgins put up. That was his worst number he's put up since his rookie season. Mind you, he was dealing with a lot of injuries all throughout the season. I almost look at last year as like a throwaway year, like a lot of things went wrong. It is what it is. Uh, I, I, I think T. Higgins has a large enough body of work that we've seen now where I know that he's a legitimate wide receiver in the NFL. I know that he's capable of being a one in the NFL. And how do you feel about this, man? Do you think, you know, the fact that he's in Cincinnati, do you think that Jamar Chase, yes, he does benefit him in a lot of ways, but do you think that he negative impacts him even more? Do you think he's holding him back even more from his true ceiling, Casey? I don't, I don't know about that because the quarterback play is good enough for, for right. T. And we've seen we've seen what the ceiling can. You've at least gotten a, a little taste. Um, and at the end of the season, even with Browning, you saw some excellent play from from T. Oh, Higgins yeah. there, just making ridiculous grabs to just kind of remind you, hey, check this shit out. Um, so, no, I, I think consistently probably, but like to show what the ceiling can be. Uh, and there was certainly parts of seasons where people have pointed out that, that T was the more consistent, better player through certain chunks of parts of season than Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is inevitably going to be the guy that ends up being the long term situation they, right, they need to right. pay both of those dudes what they, are they, they doing? should open they the sh- book up cincinnati what are you doing they should figure it out but idiots probably it's they're hard to pay over there. it's hard to pay two guys like that especially once now that your quarterback's paid it's tough to 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 pay all of those guys and still put any semblance of a of a team around them they just always per- been been forever yeah, they, they've at least they've at least been a little better uh recently well, you so make it to a super bowl you get a little more money you yeah. can spend a little more money and yeah, it's you know it's it's playing alongside of Chase. I, I believe it may benefit him to a certain degree, but let's be honest. You know that he has a better chance of being the team's wide receiver one. Uh, you know, nearly on on any other roster, I would argue. Right? Obviously, Jamar Chase being a top two, top three wide receiver in football. Um, but you know, prior to this season, he had back to back seasons, uh, wide receiver twenty two or better back-to-back seasons with 110 plus targets 70 plus receptions a thousand plus yards like we've seen it man we've seen it for multiple seasons and he's still just he's still just 25 years old like he's so young i i'm not talking just redraft casey i'm talking dynasty as well i think he's a great buy low and i think there are some gms out there that are that are just frustrated i think they're just like not necessarily get this guy off my roster but hey man if i can kind of cash out and go get like a Ah, uh, somebody in like the Lad McConkey tier, maybe, maybe someone is willing to go get that new shiny toy. I'm not saying every GM, but you know, every every league's different, man. Maybe someone relatively close to like Brian Thomas Jr., like that caliber. You know, late first, we're talking early second, Dynasty Superflex. A hundred percent. We I don't know if the episode's out yet, but we we talked about this some, and I would I would absolutely trade. You know, what you here you can see the eight FFD ADP. Uh, Brian Thomas is is down about a round from where T Higgins is, but I think some people would absolutely do that. Just saying, hey, I'm resetting on the new T Higgins uh, mm-hmm. with Brian Thomas Robinson right. or uh, Brian Thomas Robinson, <laughs> Brian Thomas Jr. Um, getting running backs and 
everybody confused. But yeah, that he, they, he flexes right in there around the Lad McConkey and the Xavier Worthy. So that nine, 10, 11, 12 area in your, in your super flex tight end premium drafts. I think that's all day long. Oh you yeah, could, that, 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 that episode's out for sure. You could potentially trade uh, in that area. So I think you're, you're right, right spot on there. <laughs> Um, and, and people people do sour on somebody because he didn't give you immediate production and and his status is a little up in the air and now you know he's he's 25 so now you get starting to get almost 26 you know, might you know, as well be dead right you're starting to get a little concerned so I think that's an astute observation there uh, Austin all right your next guy yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna throw another one out there and I'm I'm digging a, I've been I've been out here snooping around in the 11th round uh, so my next guy also in the 11th round. I'm going to go Christian Watson here, third mm-hmm. third year guy. This used to be the year that they break out, but yeah. you, you know, now now if it's a third year, he stinks. Uh you have hate in your heart, let it out. Uh, so I have not been a huge uh Christian Watson guy. I haven't caped for him as the kids would say, but it is <laughs> it is good cape weather, cool breezy. That cape weather quote was Seinfeld if you're a Seinfeld guy. Larry David's uh walking with George's dad and he's like, "Why is your dad in the Upper East Side with a man so with a cape with on. A cape on. <laughs> He's like, Jerry's like, well, that's good cape weather. Cool, breezy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but I have not been a huge Christian Watson guy. But now, it, this is this is how this works, right? We're, we're starting to get to a point where people are are like, eh. And, and I've, I know it to be true because I have, I'm in a rebuild and Christian Watson is, is, a, is a tool that I would like to use to tool, you know, pick some other different assets up and move some stuff around because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a year or two away, at least on a team that I inherited. And nobody will give me anything from 111 to 24 to 25 for Christian Watson. They won't, not even a non starter, right? And this is super flex, no premium. But nobody mm-hmm. will even give me a rebuttal trade on him. So I know the value is down on Christian Watson, but these are the kind of guys, like you said, all these guys that you want to bet on to bounce back. There's been some injuries, but we've seen some big upside. We've seen some big splash. The Packers have five primetime games. They'll be the even if it's not primetime, they'll be America's game of the week on Fox a lot of the weeks. People love the Green Bay Packers. They're a national brand. Everybody sees them. Now Jordan Love's out there. Everybody's wondering who's the guy to Who's the receiver to buy and, and own in, in Green Bay? And it's like, my, mine is get the cheaper ones. Give me Romeo and, and Wicks. But it's getting to the point where Christian Watson's so cheap that when he's on the field and, and he's that, that prototypical size and speed that everybody likes, he's 6'4", 200 plus pounds. Uh, and, and again, when he makes plays, they're flashy as all hell. And those are the kind of things that are people. And, and he's already had a cult following. And that's another thing that I like to look at is people have already been already really into Christian Watson. They just have the attention span of a gnat. Uh, and have mm-hmm. now been like, well, I don't know about Christian Watson anymore uh, until he has four freaking good weeks in the beginning of the season and is on the field and you're seeing him do some things. And then all of a sudden now I can get a first round pick for him. That's why I'm buying in. That's why I like the bounce back. Because I can see a path to really be- escalating in value, and that's what you want to do right now, right? You want to bet on these guys who can rebound and have a path to bouncing back in, in value, and either really help your team or sell for plus plus plus. You know, Christian Watson is is now getting help with the with the hamstrings. They're trying to figure it out. They he had one hamstring was X amount more muscle on it than the other, so they're trying to get those within six percent of each other. Um, and Weight one oh five. Yeah, in your bra. And if you could keep Watson on the field, he would greatly help uh, the down-the-field prowess of of the Green Bay Packers, as well as just everybody else on, on that field. And I think he would creep into being a lot of people's the guy to own yeah. uh, for the Green Bay Packers because he's a little splashier. Reed's the guy they say, quote-unquote, you manufacture for. But Reed can get downfield, Reed's too. Reed's splashy. But... but Christian Watson. Did they have just, all three of those guys on the field at the same time? Very, at all? very rarely. I was trying. I saw a stat the other day, and I could not find it again. But Christian Watson was the guy with the best target share when all those guys <laughs> have shared the field. Um, and then, as searching through stuff, uh, I did see a good Debro tweet. Um, weeks five through thirteen, minimum hundred routes, led the team in target percentage, air yard percentage, yards per route run, end zone targets, first down, uh, first read uh, target share, and first downs. Per route run, so, small sample size, but it is a small sample talk size. Talk about caping for Watson, and and he didn't he didn't necessarily crush in those weeks per se, 
But, uh, you know, it's a small sample and, and he needs to stay out there. But when he's out there, um, he certainly, and, and that's another thing, gives you some size. You know, Wicks can give you the size too. The, the tight ends can give you the size. But uh, Watson's a different animal seemingly uh, around that green or red zone area. So Christian Watson, 1104 right now. Uh, super cheap, and like I said, I mean, I think any two would would get him in in some leagues, uh, at least in the, from my experience. Super flex uh, from from. You want to trade in early too? For Christian Watson? Yeah. I mean, I, I I I don't know. Let me get that mid to late. I would I would say that. I think it's probably worth if you can trade two four. Two five for Christian Watson and and get because I do think as soon like I said I think he's a guy who will easily be turned around for a first really quickly if the gamble pays off if not a first plus um, because of all the tantalizing bits and pieces uh, to his game there so uh, but I, I do I do believe that that a two is is right in range for for getting Christian Watson and like I said I'm in a rebuild and, and nobody would trade me anyway I went from one eleven to two five and nothing. Uh, not not even a rebuttal of trying to add him to something and getting back. So, you know, you you are probably correct. So you might even be able to move a little lower and add some other picks to it, some later picks, a two and a three, like a later two and a later three or something, or a next year's three or a next year's two even for Christian Watson. You're in the draft. Hey, let me throw the next year's two. Throw. I got a year to get figure out how to get that two back. Let me see. Just it random, almost seems a like random a, two. A way to find a way to have him thrown into the trade instead of paying straight. Right. I, I'm just trying to give you a value yeah. on him. Um, but that, that would uh, that's basically what I'm saying is that right. it's, it's almost impossible to get it done with just monetarily value right. with with just a pick. So. All right, Austin, hit us with another guy. Yeah, man. Daniel Jones. Let's talk Daniel Jones, Casey. Uh, here is a player that is kind of left for dead. Nobody really cares about him. Uh, I feel like I could make a strong argue, argument that he is one of the biggest winners after the draft, right? The Giants avoided a quarterback with the fifth mm. overall or sixth overall pick, rather, and they walked away with arguably, uh, you know, second best, uh, practically the best wide receiver in the class. Like, I am so high on Malik Neighbors. I think he's truly neck and neck with Marv. Um, I think Daniel Jones is it has to be ecstatic, right? He's already gotten paid, man. He had that four year, 160 million, 40, 40 million dollars a year deal. Uh, so he's got the bag. Now he's got the receiver, finally, that we've all been anticipating for, for several, several <laughs> yeah. seasons, it feels like, right? They, they gave him Darren Waller didn't turn out too hot right uh that's about the only legitimate weapon he's he's probably had and uh anyway let, let's let's get back on track casey daniel jones right torn acl let's throw last year away it is what it is it's over with he underwent surgery in late november it, it was just a disaster and and i i want to remind everybody daniel jones is just one season removed from qb9 okay right now he is what he's probably on waivers in a lot of leagues. Like let's QB, be honest, QB like, thirty one in our ADP. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's. I mean, that sounds accurate, right? I, uh, and I think, I, th I think he's easily going to outperform his ADP, right? It would be, it would be difficult for him to not outperform that, uh, just based off his rushing upside alone. Let me go on a quick rant, Casey. Do it. Let me, let me sell you on, on uh, Daniel Jones. So he just turned twenty seven years old. We're talking about the first player. In the history of the NFL, to have 300 plus passing passing yards and two touchdown passes and 70 rushing yards in a playoff game, he was fantastic against Minnesota. 62.77 uh, completion percentage. That is the highest in New York Giants history. Daniel Jones has thrown 29 interceptions in 1,286 passes. That is a 2.3 percent uh, interception percentage that is the lowest in new york giants history uh daniel jones was the first rookie quarterback in history with two games of 300 plus passing yards and four plus passing touchdowns uh a, f a feat that he's accomplished three times uh, daniel jones threw at least one touchdown pass in each of his first 13 career starts the fourth longest streak among amongst quarterbacks um he's rushed for a thousand yards on 172 attempts 5.8 yard average that ranks first among 87th players in New York Giants history with 100 or more carries. So just just a few stats for you guys there. Uh, I think Daniel Jones is wildly underrated. I think he's 
I, I sorry, I don't even know if he's wildly underrated. I just think he's wildly undervalued. Mm. Uh, if that makes sense, I want to I want to make sure I word it correctly. I think that at, at the point that we're currently at in the off season, why not buy him, man? I think most people are going to kind of figure it out. Uh, you know, once August comes, I feel like the casuals start to figure it out a little bit more. They realize, you know, which players are starting to trend up. Oh, he now has Malik neighbors. You know, it's like a lot of these guys are going to be putting two and two together. Uh, but, you know, now is the time to buy is kind of what I'm getting at right now. Right now, I think he's cheaper than he's going to be in August. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. I've been I've been snatching him up in, in these mocks that we've been doing when you get into that 11th, 12th round. Uh, I, I do, you know, he does have the rushing upside there. He, he did get hurt, which which you got to like. And this is once again where um, you don't have to like that he got hurt. <laughs> no, this is once again where I want to be grabbing guys that I that I think have a little more upside. Obviously, the rushing upside has been there. We've seen it. Um, QB nine last year or two years ago. Two years ago, point. right? Um, and and you know that that QB well will dry up quick. But I you know I, I know I always have that card in my back pocket, and he's somebody that I that I think is is very cheap, very under undervalued. I think he's. I like probably, that caveat of not underrated, <laughs> undervalued. Um, but I, I think that's. You made some really good points that that he hasn't had a good true number one a dog out there. Uh, you could get Wandell back. Hyatt is in a second year. You could get you can stretch the field with Hyatt a little bit. If Waller comes back, great. If you could get a healthy Waller for a stretch, we know he can dominate that middle of that field. Um, if not, Wandell can do that in spades. If Wandell can stay healthy, Slayton's decent. They got Theo Johnson and Bellinger back there, so mm-hmm. uh, it's not the worst cast of characters. Their their offensive line should be once again another step in the right direction and improved, which you like to see. Uh, but to just give, like you said, Daniel Jones that that true, we're hoping, fingers crossed, number one alpha receiver, I think is huge. And and the, to point out that he hasn't hasn't really had that in his entire career is, um, I think that says a lot about the position that they've really put Daniel Jones in to try to make this work. You know, we're seeing guys like Will Levis and you saw Baker Mayfield and you've seen Geno Smith now get into situations where there's guys all around him that he can depend on. uh, Right. And making his job a whole lot easier to, to be um, confident in letting that ball get out of his hands and, and, and go to his receivers. And I think that's hopefully something that we can see a little bit more out of Daniel Jones and, and the confidence in the running uh, hopefully we'll be back. What, what the only interesting thing to me is, is I don't know what week that knee injury was in. I, I'm going to assume he's more than healthy. Look, I mean, he looked he, like well, his last season. game was week nine, week nine. Okay. And then he missed, he, he missed week six through I think eight. That was a well. neck injury. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I like it, man. I like, I like the Daniel Jones buy. We're talking super flex 9.999 times out of 10 on this show. And I think he's just a nice little undervalued, uh, scoop up and and when everybody hates him and nobody likes him and everybody thinks he stinks that's when you want to pounce on him and let everybody call you the idiot and then all of a sudden week six seven somebody's like damn i really need a quarterback daniel jones's game log looks pretty decent <laughs> you know so i like it all right so my last bounce back candidate is another third year wide receiver and now i'm in the 12th round so i've done an 11th and 11th and now i'm at 1209 in the fft adp i'm going johan Dotson, Jahan. I know it's Jahan. Relax. Oh, I hope you don't do this for a living. <laughs> How can you get his names wrong? Um, uh, comment section. Hits. So, still only 24 years old, 5'11", 182. Got the first round draft capital. Not that I care about that at this point. It doesn't really matter, but it does help. But we, we saw an explosion as a, a, a out of Jahan. Would you say off the rip? In, in As a rookie, off the rip, yeah. sure. Uh, we saw the, the TDs, and we we knew there had to be a regression. Mm, I love um, seeing them TDs, though. But Curtis Samuel is now out of there. They did bring in Luke McCaffrey, we'll, so we'll see what happens. But I'd like to see Jahan slide into the slot a little bit more here and there. He He's proved to me that he can play outside and he can win outside. If you go back to 2022 uh, reception perception, he he was 81 point, or 80, mm-hmm. 80.1 percent. Uh, success rate versus zone, 87th percentile success rate versus press, and top 10 in contested test contested catch rate. Um, and his vertical routes, his curls, and his comebacks were outstanding near an uh, elite level there. So th- he's shown that he can separate, he can get free. 
Uh, he can score touchdowns. He can beat you in a um, myriad of ways, whether it's it's the short, quick stuff where it's it's get off of me or whether it's the down the field stretching stuff. There's just been poor quarterback play. It's held Terry McLaurin down. Now, obviously, Terry has been outstanding and, and, and the hoss of this receiving core. But uh, I think even as a rookie, you're going to see the difference that it can make with Jaden Daniels new regime. Um you get rid of the B enemy stuff they, they they felt like it seemed like they were really uh, giving Curtis his dues there, which I like Curtis. But Dotson, to me, is a superior player and needs to have the target volume. And I think there's a nice little bounce back here for the, the commanders and the reset. And Jahan Dotson's, I think, going to be a big, big winner uh, in this whole reset for them. I just He's such a good route runner. Let's get him a little bit more in the slot. Doesn't need to be all. Doesn't need to be a full time slot. But let, let him and Luke kind of bounce back and forth a little bit. Do different things with him. You got Kingsbury now over there calling that offense. Um, so let's see what happens and let's see what what kind of chemistry uh, him and Jaden Daniels brings. And and I'm you know in no way shape or form am I am I going to sit here and say that that Terry's going to be the odd man out again because Terry is going to absolutely love this. We know that Jaden Daniels can get you. Uh, that deep pass down the field. Um, but when you get a new quarterback, you never know who's going to be their, their oh shit safety blanket kind of guy. We talk about this all the time. And it's probably going to be Terry, but there's, it could be Jahan Dotson in, in, uh, in Washington there. So what, can't wait to see the rapport between those two guys. Can't wait to see what Jahan Dotson does this year. And, you know, he's dead to everybody and we've seen we've already seen him do it and, and we've seen him do it at a pretty high level as at his first year in the league a little bit of a bummer last year everything was a bummer over there there's just a really poorly run offense uh so let's see how this thing unfolds in year three and, and in year one he said he felt like he got traded like because everything changed and he was like it feels so much better so much different around here uh so Interesting perspective from Jahan there. Austin, uh, thoughts on on closing this episode out? Yeah, I like that you brought up draft capital, and it, draft capital matters so much did to that me. Just for you, right, right, and and the reason the reason I want to talk about that man is because if Jahan Dotson, you know, and I would call him a disappointment so far throughout his early career, if he was a third, you know, third, fourth, fifth round pick, right. or even later, man, like. Oh God, we'd be writing him off like he's Cedric Tillman or something, right? You, yeah. you would kind of look at him like, you know, I want nothing, nothing to do with him. But the fact that they invested 16 overall, you know, mid first round draft capital, it's like, damn, uh, we as a front office, you know, and the GM, like we look silly if we just give up on this kid after a year and a half, two years. It's like we have to continue to put him out on the field and, you know, just just continue to help him develop. And and for what it's worth, man, he had the he ran the fourth most routes last season, 626, yeah. played all 17 games. So you know that they were they, they didn't give up on him last year. Like they were no, putting they just him out targeting him. They, right. He was just getting cardio, man. It was yeah. uh it was uh there's a lot that I could take away from it, but, uh, you know, I, I'm really – I think if you're a Washington fan, it, overall, you have to be happy with this offseason. You have to be happy with the draft, right? You have to be excited. You have to have more hope. Um, it just feels like Washington is trending in the right direction, and I hope that all of these factors ultimately benefit Jahan Dotson. I think they're going to. I agree. I agree. All right, we got Austin Abbott at Austin Abbott FF on the Twitter's – uh, he's got the pod back. Make sure you go check that out. Where can we get the pod, Austin? Yeah, man, I appreciate that. Fade consensus. Yep, I uh, I throw it up, you know, all the time on my Twitter at Austin Abbott FF. Uh, I'm on the Apple Podcasts, Spotify, but pretty much anywhere you, you can find podcasts. So I appreciate that, man. Yeah, and then he does Ricky Pearsall cameos on OnlyFans. So make sure you check <laughs> yeah. that out. Uh- <laughs> All right, we'll catch you guys next time. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. If you're not hitting that five-star review button on the podcast, you're a butt. (laughs) Tons of downloads, not as many reviews. Hit me with that five-star, too. I mean, if you're not going for the five stars, then don't even go. Yeah. Or leave leave an honest negative review, but hit the five stars anyway. I mean, (laughs) all right, we'll catch you next time. Peace.